Good afternoon and welcome to the Learning the Stepwork with me, Teach Lynn, your teacher, whatever. And I am very organised today, no lift music. I've also figured out, as Paulette said, because um, I was in such a panic each time, that it's very easy to mute, but I can't mute it. Even though I'm the owner of the server, it automatically plays that all the time uh, for everybody you have to mute it and there's just a little musical note at the bottom and you click on it okay but I did manage to start um, the recording when the stage was already ready so I wasn't inflicting it on anybody okay so we are continuing with reading the book Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson and if you look at the pinned messages, you'll see we're on chapter seven, page 54 in my copy of the book, 49 in the actual book itself, um, if you've got the same copy as me. These do vary. Hello, Hermina, not too late. Not, not too late. Oh, you're on the list. Uh, you are on the list. Just join the um, stage okay so if you just go to the stage then yeah as soon as you're in we can add you oh you're there <laughs> so invite to speak and Eleanor's here as well excellent day so hello 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 Hello, Hermina, can you hear me? Can I hear yes, you? Yes, yes, of course, I can hear you. Sorry, I am late. Good, today, good, good. <laughs> today I am getting my That's new okay. kitchen. I'm like, your kitchen, and I made a... Uh, yeah. And, How exciting. Yeah, and I had to uh, to prepare a meal for the workers. So I I am late. Sorry for this. You 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 feed the workers from the... You feed them a meal? Yes, of course. Wow. Aren't you lovely? Yeah. I've never heard of the like. Wow. Okay. So, uh, Nina, you, um, uh, you'll be on after Nina, and uh, because you've come up with a very good excuse why you're not on the list yet, you're not too late. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I've just got to. That's okay. You're a regular, so Nina. There you go. And we have only just started. So today's readers are uh, in order of appearance: Paulette, who was the early bird. Eleanor, who was very close, Alexandra, who deliberately held back a bit, Nina, who came along later, and Hermina, who just arrived. <laughs> uh, but be warned, if you're not a regular reader, I won't, ju I won't budge people around uh, on the reading list by the time we've started. Uh, OK, so as per usual, five minutes maximum reading time. You can stop whenever you feel like it. Trust me. It's five minutes. It might go a little bit longer if you're in the middle of a paragraph because it's very awkward for somebody who's following on to find the right place in the middle of a paragraph. So keep going and wait for me to tell you to stop and don't panic. <laughs> but you can stop at any time. OK, <laughs> any questions before you uh, before we start? Everybody happy? Well then, let's begin. Uh, Paulette, if you would like to begin as soon as you feel. Yes, thank you. I did my best in the small time allowed me to meet some things like a man, something like a man, or rather I should say something like a boy of the poor creature Ransom. But his mind was scared truly human. He could remember nothing of the time before he came to see, only that his father had made clocks and had a starling in the parlor, which could whistle the north, which could whistle the north country. All else had been blotted, had been blotted out in these years of hardship and cruelties. He had a strange notion of the dry land, picked up from sailor stories that it was a place where lads were put to some kind of slavery called a trade and where apprentices were continu continually lashed and clapped into full prisons. In a tone, he told every second person a decoy, a decoy, and every 
dirt house, a place in which semen would be drugged and murdered. To be sure, I would tell him how kindly I had myself been used upon that dry land he was so much afraid of, uh, he was so much afraid of, and how well fed and carefully told both by my friends and my parents. And if he had been recently hurt, he would weep bitterly and swear to run away. But if he was in his usual crack brain humor or still more, if he had got uh, if he had if he had had a glass of spirits in the roundhouse, he would deride the notion. It was Mr. Rich, heaven forgive me, who gave the boy drink, and it was doubtless kindly meant. But besides that, it was ruin to his health. It was the pitifulest thing in life to see this unhappy, unfriended creature staggering stagger, and dancing and talking he knew now what. Some of the men laughed, but not all. Others would grow as black as thunder, thinking perhaps of their own childhood, of their own children, and bid him stop that nonsense and think what he was doing. As for me, I felt ashamed to look at him, and the poor, and the poor child still comes about me in my dreams. All this time, you should know, the Covenant was meeting continual headwinds and tumbling up and down against head seas, so that the scuttle was almost constantly shut and the forecastle lighted only by a swinging lantern on a beam. There was constant labor for all hands, the sails had to be made and shortened every hour, the strain told on the man's temper, there was a growl of quarreling all day long from birth to birth, and as I was never allowed to set my foot on deck, you could my foot on deck, you can picture to yourselves how weary of my life I grew to be, and how impatient for a change. And the change I was to get, as you shall hear. But I must first tell of a conversation I had with Mr. Riach, which put a little heart in me to bear my troubles, getting him in a, favor in a favorable stage of drink, for indeed he never looked near um, he never looked near me when he was sober. I pledged him to secrecy and told him my whole story. He declared it was like a ballad, that he would do his best to help me, that I should have paper, pen and ink, and write one line to Mr. Campbell and another to Mr. Rancular, and that if I had told the truth, then to one he would be able, with their help, to pull me through and set me in my rights. And in the meantime, says he, Keep your heart up. You are not the only one. I tell you that. There's many, there's many a man hooing tobacco overseas that should be mounting his horse at his own, at his own door at home. Many and many, and life is all viriorum at the best. Look at me. I'm a lad son, and more than half a doctor. And here I am, man Jack, the whole season. Very good, well done. Thank you. Okay, so no diddling today because I forgot to diddling um, mute my mic here. So <laughs> I was trying to be quiet whilst you were reading. Nicely read, very nicely read. What a great start. Okay, so um, any questions before I give Paulette her feedback? No questions? Indeed, well done. Yes, indeed. Okay, so, um, first one, Paulette, scarce. You've got to get this at the end, otherwise it's scare, to scare someone, but if it's scarce, it's rare, it's in short supply. So, scarce, try it. Scarce. 
very good well done and then foul not like fool if something is if somebody's a fool they're just an idiot if they're foul they're really nasty <laughs> so foul try it foul very good and then your pronunciation was fine here but the stress was slightly off it's decoy so the stress is on the first syllable decoy try it decoy Perfect. And a decoy is uh, something you put in place to pull somebody's attention away from something like a decoy duck. <laughs> One of those little fake ducks you put on the pond yeah. to attract other ducks. Quack, quack. OK, then meant, not like mint, meant, mint. like men mint. with a t. Mint. Try it. That's it. Yeah, good. And then uh, you, you, yeah, <laughs> you were, ooh, ooh, ooh. It's stuck, it's stuck in Staggering, yeah, with the hard g. Okay, and here it comes again. Folksall. <laughs> Can you hear it? Folksall. Folksall. Try it. Folksall. That's it. And then hoeing to hoe. Uh, it's like to you. You can get. You can use it's a name of a hoe of a gardening tool it's also the verb for removing the weeds with a um it's like a long stick with a short blade on it and you just rub it backwards and forwards on the soil and it kills the weeds if anybody wants to come and hoe my garden please do <laughs> hoeing try it hoeing very good and then 10 to 1 10 to 1 10 to 1 try it. 10 to that's one. it yeah not to do with the time Okay, uh, it's basically um, a prediction, yeah. So, like uh, the odds on favourite of a horse, ten to one. Put one pound on, get ten back. <laughs> ten to one. Okay, so it's like a gambling thing. And then, well done for this. I had to give you a smiley. If he had had a glass of spirits, the past perfect. <laughs> Oh, lovely. So, say it again. If he had had a glass of spirits. If he had had a glass of spirits. Very good. Don't worry about Folksall, guys. Honestly, I very much doubt you'll need it in your day-to-day -day life unless you go to sea <laughs> in a beautiful pea-green boat. Okay, so um, the next person to read on my list is Eleanor. Eleanor, are you ready? Uh, I am, uh, but I don't remember how we at the end of the chapter. Uh, no, you've got, I thought it would be ah, civil. Okay, yeah, I have. From there, okay. <laughs> so, as soon as you're ready, if you would like to start. I thought it would be civil to ask him for his story. He whistled loud. Never had one, said he. I like fun, that's all. And he skipped out of the forecastle. Chapter 8. The Roundhouse. One night about 11 o'clock, a man of Mr. Ryak's watch, which was on deck, came below for his jacket. And instantly there began to go a whisper about the forecastle that Shuan had done for him at last. There was no need of a name, we all knew who was meant. But we had scarce time to get the idea rightly in our heads, far less to speak of it, when the scuttle was again flung open and Captain Hosison, Hosison came down the ladder. He looked sharply round the banks in the tossing light of the lantern, and then Walking straight up to me, he addressed me to my surprise in terms of heightness. My man, said he, we want thee to serve in the roundhouse. You and Ransom are to change beds, run away aft with thee. Even as he spoke, two seamen appeared in the scuttle, carrying Ransom in their arms and the ship at that moment giving a great sheer into the sea and the lantern swinging, the light fell direct on the body's face. It was as white as wax and had a look upon it like a dreadful smile. The blood in me ran cold and 
I drew in my uh, I drew in my breath as if I had been struck. Run away aft, run away aft with thee, cried Hosison. And at that I brushed by the sailors and the boy, who never spoke nor moved, and ran up the ladder on deck. The brig was shearing swiftly and giddily to a long cresting swell. She was on the starboard tack and the left hand under the arched foot of the foresail. I could see the sunset still quite bright. This at such an hour of the night surprised me greatly, but I was too ignorant to draw the true conclusion that we were going north about round Scotland and were now on the high sea between the Orkney and Shetland the islands having avoided the dangerous currents of the Pentland Firth. For my part, who had been so long shut in the dark and knew nothing of headwinds, I thought we might be halfway or more across the Atlantic. And indeed beyond that I wondered a little at the lateness of the sunset light, I gave no heed to it and pushed on across the decks running between the seas, catching at ropes, and only saved from going overboard by one of the hands on deck who had been, who had been always kind to me. The roundhouse for which I was bound and where I was now to sleep and serve stood some six feet above the decks and, considering the size of the brick, was of good dimensions. Inside were a fixed table and bench, and two beds, one for the captain and the other for the two mates, turn and turn about. It was all fitted with lockers from top to bottom, so as to stow away the officer's belongings and a part of the ship's stores. There was a second storeroom underneath, which you entered by a hatchway in the middle of the deck. Indeed, the, indeed, all the best of the meat and drink and the hail of the powder were collected in this place, and all the firearms except the two pieces of grass ordnance were set in a rack in the aftermost wall of the roundhouse. The most of the Very. cutlasses were in another place, okay? Very good, well done. Sorry, I was a little bit previous there. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so, um, yeah, well, we'll see how perfect that was. So, any questions before I give Eleanor her feedback? <laughs> scary, yeah, be terrified, be really terrified, because I am so scary. <laughs> okay, then, if there are no questions, just congratulations. Very good. Very nicely read. But, sorry, you did say forecastle. Uh, it's forecastle. Oh, oh, forecastle. Forecastle. Uh, <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying it. Although, really, I don't, I don't mind. I could understand why people say forecastle. Anyway, so, the next one, though, instantly. There's no ant. It's an instantly try it instantly instant that's it you're more likely to need that word <laughs> okay then kindness 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 that's it you've got to get the d and the na. yeah so kind and then this kindness okay <laughs> and then i think you just misread this yeah, it's neither, neither not never okay, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> neither this nor that <laughs> then sunset Sunset, what did I see? Oh, that's it. I can't remember. I think you missed the T off the end. Sunset. And then the L. Table. Table. Oh, table. Table. That's it. Good. And then, um, again, I think you misread it. You were thinking he was dead and turned him into a body already. The boy's face. Not the body's face. The boy's face. The boy's face. That's it. Good. Well done. Okay. So the next person on my... 
uh, reading list is Alexandra. Alexandra, are you ready? Um, yes, uh, yes, I, I am, but I don't know where we are. So, so could you please okay. say? Okay. Um, a small window with a shutter on each side. Uh, Have you got it? Mm -mm, which page? <laughs> Oh, somebody <laughs> wasn't paying attention. Okay, page 50, 57 in my book, 52 in the actual print version. 52. Um, a small window. Ah, yes, yes. I found it. I found. Okay. Okay, so whenever you're ready, if you would like to start. Oh, yes, thank you. A small oh. window is a shutter on each side and a skylight in the roof. Give a light by day. And after dark, there was a lamp always burning. Lamp always burning. It was burning when I entered. Not brightly, but enough to show Mr. Shuan sitting at the table with a brandy bottle and a tea painting in front of him. He was a tall man, strongly made and very black. And he stared before him on the table like one stupid. He took no notice of my coming in, nor did he move when the captain followed and leaned on the purse beside me, looking darkly at the mate. I stood in great fear of poor season and had my reason for it. But something told me I need not be afraid of him just then. And I whispered in his ear, how is he? He shook his head like one that does not know and does not, uh, and does not wish to think. And his face was very stern. Presently, Mr. Uh, Wright uh, came in. He gave the captain a glance. It meant the boy was dead as, as plain as speaking and took his play, a place uh, like the rest of us. Uh, so that we all three stood without a word, staring down at Mr. Schuan, and Mr. Schuan on his side uh, sat without a word, looking hard upon the table. All of a sudden, he put out his hand to take the bottle, and, and, and at that, Mr. Right, started forward and caught it away from him, rather by surprise and violence, crying out with an oath that there had been too much of this work altogether and that a judgment would fall upon the ship. And as he spoke, the weather sliding door standing open, he tossed the bottle into the sea. Mr. Schoen was on his feet in a trice. He still looked dazed, but he meant murder. Uh, I, uh, um, and would have done it for the second time that night, uh, um, had not the captain stepped in between him and his victim. Sit down, roared the captain. You sort and swine, do you know what you done? You murdered the boy. Mr. Schuan seemed to understand, for he sat down again and put up his hand to his brow. Well, he said, he brought me a dirty pumpkin. Panikin. At that word, the captain and I uh, and Mr. Riot all looked at each other for a second with a kind of frightened look. And then poor Sison walked up to his um, um, chief officer, took him by the shoulder, led him across to his bunk, and bade him lie down and go to sleep, as you might speak to a bad child. The murderer cried a little, but he took off his sea boots and obeyed. Ah, cried Mr. Wright with a dreadful voice, you should have interfered long since. It's too late now. Um, Mr. Wright, said the captain, 
This night's work must never be a can uh, in the desert. The boy went overboard, sir. That's what the story is. And I would give five pounds out of my pocket. It was true. He turned to the table. What may you throw the good bottle away? He added. Uh, there was no sense in that, sir. Here, David, draw me another. Draw me another. Uh, they are in the bottom locker. And he tossed me a key. You'll need a glass yourself, uh, sir. He added to the uh, to riot. Uh, it was an ugly thing uh, to see. Very good. Well done. Very nicely read. Very sad. Yeah. Okay. So I know. <laughs> Bloody alcohol. So, alcohol. Yeah, and having power over other people. That's never good for humans. Okay. So any questions before I give Alexandra her feedback? Everybody okay? No questions? Okay then, Alexa. Okay, the, the first one, I think you just misread it, but it was it, not a uh, it. Okay. It. Don't ask me where it was, yeah, it. <laughs> okay. Then coming, it's an uh, coming. Coming. Not com. Coming. That's it, yeah, good, good, good. Then word. Word, word. Not like ward, you've got a ward in a hospital or you're somebody's ward. They look after you, but word, okay. And then brow. Brow. That's it. Frightened has a silent E at the end. Frightened. Very good. And bunk. Carefully, it doesn't sound like bank. Bunk. Bunk. That's it. So it's like a bunk, bunk beds. It's those two beds, one on top of the other. Yeah, bunk. And then you get three smileys, one of which was a correction, but you did say it correctly the second time. So well done. You've corrected yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one is lamp. La Try lamp. It. Very good. Word. Word. Very good. And panicking. Well done. Panicking. And I even yeah. can say uh, uh, foxel. Foxel? Is it? Foxel, oh, yeah. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you'd never do it and you did it. <laughs> yes, I did, but I don't know how long. <laughs> well, yes, but you'll never forget now. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> okay, Thank you. so you're welcome. Next person to read is Nina. Nina, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Excellent. As soon as you feel comfortable, if you would like to. Okay, so the pair sat down and hob a nobbed, and while they did so, the murderer, who had been lying and whimpering in his bird, raised himself upon his elbow and looked at them and at me. That was the first night of my new duties, and in the course of the next day, I had got well into the run of them. I had to serve at the meals, which the captain took at regular hours, sitting down with the officer who, uh, who was off duty. Uh, all the day through, I would be running with a drum to one or other of my three masters. And at night, I slept on a blanket thrown on the deck board at the aftermost end of the roundhouse and right in the uh, draw of the two doors. It was a hard and cold bed, nor was I suffered to sleep without interruption, for someone would be always coming in front deck to get drawn, and when a fresh watch was to be set, two and sometimes all three would sit down and brew a ball together. How they kept their health, I know not any more than now I kept my own. And yet in other ways, it was an easy service. 
there was no cloth uh, to lay. The meals were either or either of oatmeal, porridge or salt junk, except twice a week when there was dove. And, uh, and though I was clumsy enough and not being firm on my sea, sea legs, sometimes fell with what I was bringing then, uh, both Mr. Riot and the captain were singularly patient. I could not but fancy they were making up leeway with their conscience, uh, consciences and that they would scarce have been so good with me if they had not been worse uh, with Ransom. As for Mr. Schwann, the drink or his crime or the two together had certainly troubled uh, his mind. I cannot say I ever saw him in his proper wits. He never grew used to my being there. He stared at me continually. Sometimes I could have uh, thought uh, or thought with terror and more than once drew back from my hand when I was serving him. I was pretty sure from the first that he had no clear mind of what he had done. And on my second day in the roundhouse, I had the proof of it. Uh, we were alone and he had been staring at me a long time. When all at once up he got as pale as death and came close close up to me, to my great terror, but I had no cause to be afraid of him. You were not here before, he asked. No, sir, said I. There was another boy, he asked again, and when I had answered him, and when I had answered him, ah, says he, says he, I thought that and went and sat down without another word, what, uh, except to call for brandy, for brandy. You may think it strange, but for all the horror I had, I was, uh, I was still sorry for him. He was a married man with a wife in, la in lace, but uh, whether or not he had a family, I have now forgotten, I hope, I hope not. Very good. Well done. Nicely. Um, oh, Paulette, I could hear her. Sorry, it is only you. It was only you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear. I could yeah. hear at last also Nina. Oh, OK. You must have just had a, an interruption in the oh. sound. But nicely read, nicely read. Okay, uh, I can hear you perfectly, Nina. Don't worry. Okay, so here we go. We've got uh, some corrections. Any questions first before I give Nina her corrections? Oop. Nobody? Okay. Then, um, the first one, duties and duty. It's not like dirty. Dirty means mucky, yeah? You've got um, some dirt on your hands. Duty is something you have to do. So, duties and duty. Try it. Duty and duties. Du not duties, duties. <laughs> duties, duties. Okay. That's it. If you want to say it like an American, you'd have to say duties. <laughs> <laughs> and duty. So um, no, it's duty and duties because I'm British. Okay, so the next one, officer. Officer. Try it. Officer. Officer. That's better. And then I think you just misread this. How, not now. How. How. That's it. And then scarce. Scarce. Yeah. Scarce. That's it. That's it. Good. Not like scar. Scarce, like scare, but with a s on the end, scarce. Then, yeah. you weren't sure about this, thought, thought, I thought so. 
thought in British, yeah. thought in American. That, <laughs> uh, let me explain myself. Uh, my first <laughs> choice to, to, to speak English is for a uh, British accent, but in the beginning I, I couldn't understand nothing. Uh, I couldn't ah. uh, better uh, uh, recognize the the letters, the vowels. So I I come I uh, uh, I I have to study American English, and I I I find so fast the speaking. So I go to Canadian. <laughs> English <laughs> and uh, every every uh, uh, everything become uh, more clear to me and I wow. recognize the vowel, the land, and the study syllables. And so I now I come back to American English that is so easy for me to recognize. And now I I focus my studies on British English. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, what a, what a long journey you have taken. <laughs> Canadian because, English, uh, hey? Wow. Uh, because it's, it's more a challenge to me to recognize uh, the syllables. So I focusing yeah. on British English now. And now I, 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 I make the, the chain. The... Occasionally you just slip back. It doesn't matter. People would understand. It's fine. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on quickly. Um, the next one um, is just that phrase, to get a dram. To get a dram. Try it. To get a dram. dram. That's it. Because a dram or a wee dram is Scottish for a small drink of whiskey or some other strong spirit. Would you like a wee dram if you went into a pub in Scotland and somebody offers you that? Beware, that's going to be spirits like cognac or brandy or um, whiskey or something like that, okay? So it's strong liquor. And then either or either you said, well, either will do, either will do, doesn't matter, okay? <laughs> and then the smiley is for the word conscien consciences. Consciences, well done. Consciences. Excellent, good job, good job, good job, good job. Okay, so Thank um, you. you're welcome. Then we move on. The next person to read, and the last one to read today is Hamina. Hamina, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Thanks. Excellent. Whenever you're ready and feel comfortable, if you would like. Yes, and thank you, Lynn, to give me the chance to read, although I was late. Okay, altogether, it was no, no very hard life for the time it lasted, which, as you are to hear, was not long. I was as well fed as the best of them, even the pickles, which were the great dainty. I was allowed my share of. And had I liked, I might have been drunk from morning to night, like Mr. Schoen. I had company, too, and good company of its sort. Mr. Riach, who had been to the college, spoke to me like a friend when he was not sulking, and told me many curious things, and some that were very informing, and even the captain thought he kept me at the sticks end the most part of the time, would sometimes unbuckle a bit and tell me of the fine countries he had visited. The shadow of poor Ransom, to be sure, lay on all four of us, and on me and Mr. Schuhan in particular, most heavily. And then I had another trouble of my own. Here I was, doing dirty work for three men, that I looked down upon, and one of whom, at least, should have hung upon a gallows. That was for the present. Present. That was for the present. And as for the future, I could only see myself slaving alongside of Negroes in the Dubaco fields. Mr. Riach, perhaps from caution, would never suffer me to say another word about my story. 
The captain whom I tried to approach rebuffed me like a dog and would not hear a word. And as the days came, came and went, my heart sank lower and lower, till I was even glad of the work which kept me from thinking. Chapter 9 The Man with the Belt of Gold More than a week went by, and in which the ill luck that had hitherto he he pursued the governant upon his voyage grew yet more strongly marked. Some days she made a little way, others she was driven actually back. At last we were beaten so far to the south that we tossed and ducked and ducked to and fro the whole of the ninth of the ninth day, within sight of Cape Roth and the wild, rocky coast on either hand of it. There followed on that a council, a council of the officers, and some decision which I did not rightly understand, being only the result, that we had made a fair wind of a foul one and were running south. The tenth afternoon there was a falling swell and a thick, wet, white fog that hit one end of the brick from the other. All afternoon, when I went on deck, I saw men and officers listening hard over the forewalks for breakers. They said, I thought I did not so much as understand the word. I felt danger in the air and was excited. Maybe about ten at night, I was serving Mr. Reach and the captain at their supper. When the ship struck something with a great sound and we heard voices singing out, my two masters leaped to their feet. She struck, said Mr. Rich. No, sir, said the captain, we have only run a boat down. And they hurried out. The captain was in the right of it. We had run down a boat in the fog, and she had parted in the midst and gone to the bottom with all the crew but one. This man, as I heard afterwards, had been sitting in the stern as a passengers, while the rest were on the benches rowing. At the moment of the blow, the stern had been thrown into the air and the man, having his hands free, and for all he was encumbered with a frieze overcoat that came below his knees, had leaped up and caught hold of the brick's bow sprit. It showed he had luck and much agility as an unusual strength that he should have thus saved himself from such a pass. And yet, when the captain brought him into the round house, and I set eyes on him for the first time, he looked as cool as I did. He was smallish in, sta in stature, but well set and as nimble as a goat. His face was of a good open expression, but sunburned, very dark and heavily freckled on pitted with the smallpox. His eyes were unusually light and had a kind of dancing madness in them. That was both engaging and alarming, and when he took off his great coat, he laid a pair of fine silver-mounted pistols on the table, and I saw that he was belted with a great sword. His manners besides were elegant, and he pledged the captain handsomely. Altogether I thought of him. At the first sight, there went my enemy. The captain too was very good. Okay. Well done. <laughs> Sorry, I I wasn't paying attention. I clicked on the wrong button and muted myself. Oh, somebody's got a buzzer. <laughs> okay, and I hope it was too, it wasn't too loud. The back sound here. Oh, the, the um, yeah, there was a little bit of drilling I could hear, but it was fine. I could hear you clearly, oh, God, so thanks. that's the most important thanks, thing. Not God. too loud at all. Okay. <laughs> and I hope it's not too dusty for you. Okay, so any questions before I give Hermina her feedback? Nope. Okay, then. Uh, the first one, all together, not like Al. All. It's like A double L. All. All, right? all together. Yeah, all together now. Okay, all together. <laughs> and then company. 
company. Company. Yeah, well done. Then we have sulking. Don't sulk. It's not attractive. Sulking. Sulking. <laughs> uh, sulking. That's it. <laughs> not sulking, sulking. You've got to get that O. Sulking. Mm -hmm. Try again. Sulking. That's better. Then you'd thought about it, but it's not like to present. It's the present as in time. It's not present as a gift, but the present. The present tense. Think about that. Present tense. You know that one. So it's present. Yeah. Try it. I am blushing. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's an old, an old, uh, yeah. not a friend. Not a of a friend. <laughs> it's, an, it's a fossilized mistake. Okay. okay. Present. Yeah. Try it. Of course. Present. I call. We call yeah, here yeah. about the time, it, not a gift. That's it. Not. Not. Well, the gift is the same. The gift is present. <laughs> the time is the present. <laughs> it's when you're presenting something. I give you when something. You present a present. That's it. That's present. A present. Okay. I give you something. I give. I. Okay. I present you a. I present you a present. Yeah. You present me with a present. That would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one is bulwark. Okay, so have a have a bulwark. Listen. Bulwark. Try it. Bulwark. That's it. So not walk, but work. Like a little short. Uh. Mm -hmm. Then leaped. Yeah, but leapt because it's the past of to leap. And we we in British English we spell it L E A P T. So it's easier in that way to see that it's leapt. Leapt. Okay. Leapt. That's it. Then stature, stature, not like statue, stature. Yeah, a stature. What's a, what's a stature? Stature isn't a thing. It's, um, uh, it's a description. So someone of great stature is somebody who's high up in society. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I understand. So not like a statue. You might have a man of stature who has a statue of himself. You never know. Uh, but you can also describe height. So if you say if someone is of short stature, then it means they're short. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it also means that their importance or their reputation. Yep. Okay. 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 Then you get two smileys. The first one came. Came. Very good. And well done. Ninth. Yeah. Ninth. Very good indeed. Okay, so on that note, we have uh, finished the reading for today. I hope you all enjoyed it. I did. Well done, everybody. Very nicely read. Uh, we are, let me see, um, where, where did we get? Yeah, smallish in stature. He was talking about his height, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, it was the captain too was taking his observations, I think. Yes. Okay. So that's where we've got up to. You're allowed to disagree with me if you wish to. <laughs> uh, but that's how I've got to, which is page. Uh, oh, where is it? Page 62. Oh, hang on. Page 62. And in a printed copy, 57. I don't know why it does that, but it does. Anyway. So here we're up to here. And oh, yes, it's flashing, of course. Oh, it's pancake day. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> OK, so here are all your readings together, uh, all your corrections together, I should say. And here's where we're up to for next week. OK, and I will pin that to the messages so that you can find it next week. I don't expect you to remember because I know I won't. And we'll remove last week's. OK, so uh, on that note, any questions before I... We have a word, Foxel. Yes, Foxel. <laughs> um, any questions before I disappear? No. No? OK, excellent then. Thank you very much, Paulette. Thank you very much, Eleanor, Alexandra, Nina, Hermina. Thank you for your time and well done. You're very brave. <laughs> Take care. Bye.